Hi, my name is Rafael McMaster. And this Valentine's Day, I wanted to reflect upon the language of the heart. Let's say that these days, 95% of the time, I'm generally at peace with a baseline of contentedness. Uh, and I'm grateful that at this moment, things seem to be going well with family, work, health, life in general. But 5% of the time, I feel totally overwhelmed. Uh, with the volume and frequency of texts and emails and calendar events, all feeling like they're speeding up to a manic pace. It can feel like there is always this growing list of things to do and that somehow I've stepped onto a merry-go-round that keeps getting faster and faster and I have no idea how to get off the ride. And the moments keep coming and I just feel overwhelmed. Uh, but I'm grateful that this is only 5% of the time and I'm happy to have that 95% content to 5% ratio uh, because it always hasn't, it hasn't always been this good. Uh, in fact, it's never been this good. And I'm so grateful because I know in the past, my life might've been 95% suffering and only 5% at peace. Uh, but this contentedness to suffering ratio doesn't just happen. It's a result of daily work on my attitude and the structuring of my consciousness and the developing and practices um, doing an exercise that I made up for myself that I call the ABCs of the heart. And so I figured it might be nice on this Valentine's Day to share uh, with y'all the ABCs of the heart uh, so that people have an opportunity for a different way of framing up Valentine's Day outside of uh, romantic candy. You know, part of my struggle is that when I suffer, I can get fully immersed into my struggle and it can happen at any time of the day. I can just get sucked in. And it's like it's like when I get something stuck in my teeth and I can obsess on it wholly and the rest of the world seems to disappear and fade away in importance because I'm totally obsessed with things stuck in my, my mouth until I get it out. I have a hard time thinking about anything else until I get that piece of food unstuck from my teeth. And the same can be true with my problems. I can get obsessed and fully immersed in any of the dozens of challenges and problems that come my way each day. So how can I guard and defend myself from losing perspective and getting sucked into that vortex of, of daily suffering that comes to me in surround sound these days? It is my belief that I have a magic magnifying mind. And I can really only focus through one lens and with one attitude at a time. For example, I can't necessarily be grateful and resentful at the same time. Or if I'm in a state of love and grace or flow, then conversely, by default, I'm not in a state of frustration or irritation or obsession. So for me, being in an intentionally heart-centered state of consciousness is just as much about not being in suffering as it is about enjoying those warm, fuzzy feelings. When I'm in a heart-centered energy, attitude, or perspective, then I'm in that 95% of feeling at peace uh, and not in that 5% of suffering and frustration and overwhelm. So how does one take that long and seemingly difficult journey 18 and a half inches from the head to the heart? And so with these truths in mind, and through a reflective inner journey of know thyself, I began developing a regular practice that greatly increases the probability and potentiality of being in a joyful, heart-centered attitude throughout uh, the day, rather than allowing life's challenges uh, and stresses to drag me down into frustration or discontentedness or suffering. So I call this practice the ABCs of the heart. Here we go. Let me say this, whatever I'm thinking about, whatever I'm focusing on in my mind and whatever thought forms I'm attaching to, I then animate that energy within me. And whatever I focus on grows. So if I am thinking about gratitude and practicing gratitude, well, I'll feel grateful and that'll feel great. When I focus on positive things, I feel positive. When I focus on negative things, I feel negative. And, and I know this sounds simplistic, but it doesn't mean it's easy to manage my moments, uh, moment to moment daily life. There are so many distractions that feel like they're being hurled at me repeatedly 
that I then become distracted into the events and persons, places, and things of the day, right? And, and if I'm not controlling my thoughts, then my thoughts are probably controlling me. So when I practice gratitude, I feel grateful. It's so simple, but my brain tells me that I have more important things to do or that it doesn't work or that, you know, this isn't for me. Gratitude isn't for me, although I've proven to myself a million times over that it works and that it makes me feel good. So I get cynical. I can hear my brain get cynical for a second and then get distracted by an incoming email or a text. And then I'm off to the races. Or practicing heart-centered energies feels too difficult or too abstract or too elusive or any excuse my ego will give me. Um, and so my ego tells me that practicing, it doesn't work or that it's not for me. And, and in order to get good at anything, like memorizing words to a song so that I can sing it with skill and passion. Everything requires practice, become skilled at it. And each time I practice something, I get a little bit better at it and it gets a little bit easier. And in the case of gratitude, I get pulled into this false trap of thinking about the things I'm grateful for instead of feeling the things I'm grateful for. This is a minor distinction, but it's sort of everything. I, it is the journey from the head to the heart, the ABCs in the language of the heart are energies to be felt and experienced, not intellectualized and mentally rationalized. The reason for making them ABCs is that I needed a, a basic framework to be able to easily memorize and access the concepts regardless of where I was or what I was doing. The practice is simple. Letters A through L each make available a different heart-centered energy. And that saying any of those heart-centered energies in my mind and visiting them and revisiting them then animates and energizes this energy in me. So when I am thinking about hope, I'm activating and energizing the concept and the energy and the attitude of hope. Where I put my attention is where I put my energy and whatever I focus on grows. So if I'm obsessing on this text over here, that'll be my experience. If I'm obsessing on inspiration, and if anything, I've increased the probability of that growing in my heart into a, a palpable uh, energy. And with each of these passing days, I have found my heart-centered life to grow. Uh, with each week that I continue to do the heart-centered practice of the ABCs of the heart. So my hope is that by sharing it with you, I can give you some ideas for a practice for yourself. It doesn't have to be exactly like mine. And if you put some time in and rather visit, you know, this practice once or twice or three times a day, I feel you'll get results. Primarily the result of feeling more heart centered when you want to, instead of stuck in the suffering of my brain or ego. You know, how can I be caught up in my ego up here when I'm in the energy of the heart down here? How can I be ensnared with a mental obsession on some problem or stress if I am calmly breathing, contemplating, and immersing myself into an energy of the heart? You know, to me, uh, this is what it means uh, to live heart-centered. Not just lead with heart-centric concepts, but rather to live with my consciousness and attitude shifted to this perspective centered in my heart. And with that perspective, I am able to begin to see the world more and more through the eyes of my heart. You know, to be heart-centered is more than the opportunity of a kind act. Uh, rather, it's a lifestyle, an attitude, and a way of being that truly speaks the language of the heart. And so here are my ABCs of the heart and the practice I do as I go from each letter of the alphabet from A to L, animating each of these energies within me by saying an I am statement in my mind, which then animates and activates and energizes each of these heart energies. And in my practice, I wait until I can feel that energy to move on to the next letter of the alphabet. Now, I know many people that make gratitude lists, but a lot of them miss out on the true power of the practice because they just think of some things and write them down instead of pausing after each one and really feeling it in their heart before they move on to the next mental act to feel the energy. 
Now for these alphabet letters, I'm not sure it actually makes sense if the letters go in sequential order. Uh, I just do it that way because it makes it easier for me to stay in the practice and stay in the energy of the heart uh, rather than trying to remember stuff uh, with my brain, which then pulls me up into my head and my ego. So the purpose of the alphabet is in part to make it easier to just flow with it. So starting off with the letter A, here we go. A for appreciation. And I'll say a statement in my mind like, I am appreciating my truck. Now I can easily take my vehicle for granted until it's broke or remembering back to the days when I had less and when I couldn't uh, afford a car and how much harder life was taking public transit. So if I sit with that for a second, I can really feel that energy of appreciating the fact that I have a car and that it works. Yeah. And once I can feel that heart-centered energy authentically, then I move on to the next letter, B, for beauty. Also breath. And this letter doesn't have to be just aesthetic beauty. I also include creative beauty or moral beauty. Right, moral beauty, you know, like acknowledging selfless acts in others. And I could say something like, I am witnessing beauty when I see my squad of high school volunteers give of themselves daily to serve youth in our community, teaching them creativity and art after school. C, C is for courage, Kur, whose root word Kur is French for heart. So I think of living with heart centered energy. And I think of it as living um, with this courage in the heart that helps me overcome fear. And so I think of something I have fear around and I invoke some courage around it. Then I move on to D for devotion. And I think of it in the way that Rumi and the mystic Sufi poets used to write poetry around their devotion to God. But I also think of my own relationship to my higher power of my own understanding. And I think about my devotion to my wife, to my family, to my career, to my nonprofit, and I animate that devotion within me. E is for empathy. And I think of someone um, who could really benefit today from me having uh, the experience of witnessing them and having them feel seen uh, and that they're not on the struggle alone. Next, we have F which is actually an interesting one. I'm gonna save that one for the end. Uh, but I do wanna take a second to highlight the phrasing of this self-talk, right? This inner languaging, which is specific so that it has the greatest impact on the inside. The two most powerful words I can say in the language of my mind are I am blank. I am whatever goes in after that has such a high impact in my inside world. Uh, and if the verb uh, that follows I am, is uh, in active tense, so ending with an ing. So I am honoring my family. I am enjoying the beauty of the morning sunrise. I am overcoming financial fear with courage. I am devoting my day to my family. I am meeting my friend with empathy that is really struggling right now. Okay, so that, that's part of the mechanics of it. So going back to the letters now, G, G, I want to say C is for cookies. All right. Cookies is for me. G is for gratitude, which I will sometimes use to help me shift my perspective on something. We call it flipping a G, flipping a lens of gratitude. And I can say, I'm frustrated. Our plumbing is broken and needs to be fixed. Or I can flip that lens to, I am grateful that I am a homeowner. Or with our students, they'll say, I'm frustrated with my math homework. Or I am grateful I get a free education. H is for hope, that little flickering pilot light of the heart that I refuse to let go out. I is for inspiration, the creative essence of spirit in the body. And when these heart-centered energies are in the body, in this present moment, in this present moment, then it is experiences J for joy, K for kindness and compassion, and L is for love. Now, two of the ways that I have been enjoying defining love for myself lately are, one, love is the energy of experiencing beauty, right? Love as an energy, and the energy, it's the energy of experiencing beauty, seeing those frequencies through the eyes of the heart. 
And another way I've been thinking about love is love is giving of oneself for someone else's spiritual growth. And that is where I end, A through L, going through it in my head, oftentimes in the shower or while walking the dog instead of listening to another podcast. And it always puts me in a great mood and helps me take that journey from my head to my heart. And when I go through the whole process, A through L, not moving on to the next letter until I'm actually feeling it in my heart, I, I feel joyful. I feel loving. I feel inspired. I feel those things that I'm going through. And then I leave that. I'm like ready to rock. You know, the more I practice, the more the pathway from the head to the heart becomes strengthened. And I can now get heart centered in minutes. And if I am heart centered, it means that I'm not being centered in my ego, consumed by a million different pointless thought forms or in, enraptured by my phone, that weapon of mass distraction. The one letter we jumped over was F. And I want to put forth this thought exercise to you. I want you to close your eyes and imagine you wake up one day. And that morning when you wake up, you are no longer in your home. You are someplace strange and unfamiliar. You can't remember what happened last night. And you look at your hands and you're cuffed. You're being held captive. You are no longer free. When I really take a moment to experience this, my heart sinks. Oh, the feeling. My heart energy just shrinks. And now, through this thought experiment, imagine now the cuffs are released and you are now free again. Oh, how my heart sings with this freedom. And this is a freedom that hits me in the heart that I so rarely think of, which I think is sort of the definition of taking something for granted. And so I am grateful for my freedom, freedom of body, freedom of my heart, freedom of my mind to be able to think and focus on anything that I choose. And so the question is, what am I going to focus on? How am I going to use this sacred freedom? And if I commit to using this freedom to focus on the energies and the attitudes of the ABCs of the heart, namely appreciation, beauty, courage, devotion, empathy, freedom, gratitude, hope, inspiration, joy, kindness, and love as the energy of experiencing beauty. If I focus on those, then I won't be stuck in my head, distracted by nonsense and suffering. Instead, I'll have taken that 18 inch journey from the head to the heart that my brother Dave Brubaker told me all about. And the way I feel right now in this present moment, this to me is the definition and the practice of heart-centered living. So thank you for letting me share my ABCs of the heart with you, my language of the love. Happy Valentine's Day.